In the introduction video of this assignment, I talked about problem solving tactics which can help you to find win-win solutions in negotiations. Beside these integrative tactics, there are also so-called contentious tactics, also referred to as hardball tactics. When parties apply these tactics, they aim to claim as many resources as possible for themselves without caring for the interests and needs of the other parties. Leaving aside the fact that these tactics do not create value, they often result in win-lose solutions instead of win-win agreements. As mentioned before, contentious tactics are sometimes ethically questionable and they hinder us in taking advantage of the integrative potential. Moreover, they prevent us from building trustful relationships and burden upcoming negotiations in the future. Contentious tactics are used to put pressure on the other party. They sometimes help parties to realize their concerns against the other party's resistance, particularly when faced with a weak counterpart, but often they do more harm than good. I'm going to describe a few examples of contentious tactics, including persuasive arguments, positional commitment, the good cop, bad cop tactic, and the ethically questionable tactic of misrepresentation of one's own interests. One of the most commonly used tactics to realize one's own interests is persuasive communication. Persuasive arguments have the aim of changing the other party's attitude towards the resources under consideration. Specifically, parties intend to convince the counterpart that their own interests are the most important ones. For instance, in a commons project on a scarce resource, such as water from a well in a village community, the cattle owners may try to persuade the other villagers that they have a stronger need for water than all other village residents. By using persuasive arguments, they hope that the other residents of the village will give in without requesting any compensation. Although the tactic of persuasive arguments is often applied in everyday negotiations, it rarely leads to the desired outcomes and may even result in intractable conflicts. As you may guess, from a linguistic perspective, each party's individual arguments are perceived as very persuasive, but far less persuasive from the other party's perspective. Let's take a closer look at another contentious tactic called positional commitment. A positional commitment is a statement by one party to make no further concessions on a certain resource, or in other words, the party sets an ultimatum on the respective issue. However, this tactic is only effective if the party has a very good alternative in the event of a non-agreement. Thus, one should only commit to a certain position when there are no other ways to force the other party to engage in further concession making. There is another contentious tactic I would like to briefly mention. You may have already heard about the good cop, bad cop strategy since it is often used in TV crime shows. In this strategy, two police officers act in different ways, interrogating a suspect. The bad cop presents a tough position, punctuated with threats and obnoxious behavior. After the bad cop has left the room, the good cop enters and acts in a kind, trustful and friendly way in order to get a confession from the suspect before the bad cop returns. Sometimes negotiators may use this strategy in a very similar way and switch between cooperative tactics such as providing trustful information and contentious tactics such as threatening the other party or using persuasive arguments. Negotiations sometimes involve issues for which parties both want the same outcome although frequently parties fail to recognize their shared interests. These compatible issues set the stage for a nasty misrepresentation strategy. Feigning opposed interests on the compatible issue to gain an advantage on other issues. For instance, in the aforementioned example of the residents of the village, a party without cattle demands more water from the well, although the party does not need it. 
Feigning opposed interests on the resource of water, the party aims at gaining an advantage on other resources, such as the amount of milk provided by the cattle owners for the water compensation. Although the tactic of misrepresentation may lead to desired outcomes in the short run, one should be very cautious to use the tactic in long-lasting social relationships that are usually found in commons projects. When the misled party realizes the misrepresentation, the basis for integrative agreements, namely trust, is destroyed for a long period of time. In general, hardball tactics are offensive to many people as they often include aggressive behaviors and lead to vengeful reactions or even harm the party's reputation. Especially when considering future negotiations and relationships, it is not advisable to use these tactics. Apart from the hardball tactics, there are some other tactics that can be used in those negotiations in which problem-solving tactics do not lead to the desired outcomes. So one final tactic that I want to introduce to you is the so-called tit-for-tat strategy. It is found to be in general a very effective strategy that can be successfully used in distributive negotiation. It is very simple. If you have the chance to make the first offer, you should always start cooperatively. Then, in the course of the negotiation, you should continue to imitate the behaviors of the other party. Meaning, if the other party cooperates, you should react in the same way. And vice versa, if the other party fails to cooperate, you should refrain from cooperation as well. This strategy is sometimes quite effective to keep up the exchange of concessions during the negotiation and to create more cooperation in the long run. But this tactic also has risks. As soon as one party fails to cooperate and all parties apply the tit-for-tat strategy, parties may get stuck in a state of non-cooperation. Thus, even if the other parties have not been cooperative for some time, you should try to reinitiate cooperation from time to time in order to explore whether the other parties are willing to return to cooperation and answer your cooperative initiative. To sum it up, the integrative problem-solving tactics that support the creation of value are the best choice to reach long-term sustainable win-win agreements. As research has found that trust increases mutual cooperation, you should approach your negotiation in an open manner in order to set the basis for successful negotiations.